Now the interesting thing is how to train the SVN. So try in a cage is usual just to if we have any problem message box dot show ex dot message and here we will create an object for SVN equals new SVN and we need to put some configurations for this SVN like SVN dot C that is the cost that I want to apply is 100 during the training and SVN dot type type I want to use is SVN dot type dot I want to use the classification in class classification since we have 10 classes so I'll be using CSVN with classification and also we need to do SVN dot we need to define the gamma this is how the learning will be done uh, it will be 005 let's say and these are the things which you can try yourself according to your needs and according to your results let me select the kernel to be and uh, use a simple linear kernel for me and then also svm dot svm dot termination criteria is equals to let me select the 1000 iterations and epsilon that I want is exponential minus 6 and finally I can use the svm dot train function and this one requires as you can see the samples that we have that is the train data that I have created and the data layout how your data is uh, layouted that is I have the samples in rows so I need to select this raw sample and also we have the train labels for it so that's it so I pass the training data and how my data is layout and the training labels so this will train the SVN and optionally one interesting thing is you can save the results SVN dot save you can save anywhere I call it svm dot text so next time you don't need to train it again if you have already trained it this is just will create uh, train my svm and once the svm is trained I need to test it first I need to make sure that I have the test data it's not a if we close it was null I should return I don't need to do anything and then I can put a try cage block and uh, message box ex dot message that's okay and what I need to do that to test the SVM I have the test data in my test data matrix I need to loop through this matrix one by one I will select the raw and pass it into the SVM for prediction I will display uh, I will create a counter I just call it counter equals zero this is not the global one this is with the small so this is a different count and if I shouldn't use this if here or rather I should also make sure that if SVM equals equals null again I should return I have if if SVM is not trained I will also not not do anything so by if we reach here it means we have both the test data and also the SVM is trained till now so let me apply a for loop till test data dot ROS I will create a matrix of floats and I call it raw 
and from test data sorry test data I read each raw get raw one by one and once I read the raw and now I need to pass it into SPM for testing so float predict equals whatever the prediction it has for me svm dot predict and give me prediction for this row in the label uh, in label input sorry in label test dot text i can display input label that what was my input label that i can get it from test label and the raw is i and is zero dot to string this is the test label i display in the test and similarly i can display the output label dot text equals to the predicted label plus predict dot to string so just i want to visualize whether what was my input label and what is the predicted label and also if the predicted label equals equals to test label of i comma zero then i should say that counter plus equals one so it is a correct prediction and if a user wants to see the uh, current image of the data digit is display equals equals true then i need to convert this image into a label just like this i just okay i just copy these two lines and paste it right over here and instead of this train data we have the test data and I also since it is a user interface I want to display the user interface I need to do this async and right over here I can say that await task dot delay for let's say one second else we will uh, wait for let's say task dot delay for one millisecond to display the uh, label in the user interface and once the for loop is finished that is it has processed all of it we can display the accuracy in label accuracy dot text equals to and to find the accuracy we will do something like accuracy equals what we need to do is to divide this counter by the size of this test data test data dot rows how many rows we had and maybe i need to convert this one into float so that it shouldn't make problem for the integer division so let us run this application and test it the first thing that i need to do is to load data so we display the image that data is loaded we can check this image for example you can see five hmm. there is some problem just go and click on this <laughs> this one should be less than data then i need to increase the counter similarly for this one if counter is greater than or equal to zero then i need to reduce it okay load data okay and now we can see this data here zero four this is the uh, image that we have we are taking as input one more thing that i need to do is just after finishing the 
training each display and message message box svm is trained and after the testing it will be displayed like this maybe one more thing that i need to do is this is show is show is display equals to true or i should say checkbox what is the name of this checkbox by the way the name of this checkbox is cb show data checkbox show data dot checked whatever the status it has we will assign it to this one and let's start it again file load data okay and now we can train svm it will display a message once it is trained on the data okay and let's test the svm so show it is seven so it can show this eight it is not actually updating it it is not updating the image but you can say this input label is five the predicted is also you can see that over here i'll show why it is not updating this image let's see the accuracy first so on this test and the train data it gave me an accuracy of 91 percent using this svm the most important thing that you need to note over here is uh, these parameters if you change for example we can have multiple options we can use the regression problem or one class svm or with the the epsilon it is a matter of tweaking around these uh, parameters for example i used a linear svm but when i used i tested with a uh, this RBF kernel it didn't give me good results for the same data but when I use this linear kernel it produced optimal results and also uh, I have hard coded these values for the gamma and the cost parameter so uh, in, in a real practical application we usually search for these parameters in a predefined range and uh, find those optimal parameters and using those optimal parameters we train this uh, svm and once we have the svm uh, i have saved this uh, svm.txt which we can see from here in bin folder debug i'll open it externally so here you can see an svm.txt and this is what the structure of the svm.txt i have next time <clears throat> i don't even need to do these things again i can i can load this uh, svm.txt directly so how can we do that is to let me show you here so if a file that exists I just call it and I put it in the debug as you know svm dot text if it exists so what I can do here is svm equals I create a new object of this svm and then there is a special class file storage file new file storage and here I will pass the name of the file svm dot text and what i want to do is file storage mode dot i want to read that file sorry file storage i wrongly written it as file stream now i can read the parameters from svn dot read and file dot get node which node i want to read is here we have the node this is the opencl underscore m underscore svm this node and i want to load it into the svm in this case i don't need to do all of these what i will do here 
is it will be in a part of else. If I don't have already trained SVM, then I should go for training it and save it as SVM. So you have to save it if you want to save somewhere else, you have to give the path since I have not given any path. So it will uh, save it in my debug folder as you can see here. So let's test it. Let me put a breakpoint over here and run it. File or load data. And I don't need to do that. Let me stop it. Run it again. And SVM train data. So let's step into it. So it found it and then now the SVM is basically uh, loaded all the as you can see C the gamma and whatever we had set in the previous run is available over here so it will give us a message as swim is trained and then we can test for the data since I have not loaded the data so you can try around the different parameters and i hope this video will be helpful for you and see you in the next video